my name is Ritika Patni and I am the founder of The Art of Health in Singapore. I'm delighted today to welcome you for another episode of the World Ayurveda podcast where we have been bringing you fascinating conversations from global ambassadors from the world of Ayurveda. My guest today really needs no introduction to anybody who knows about Ayurveda. He's a doctor, teacher, guru and a visionary par excellence. Dr. Vasant Lad has worked tirelessly for the past 40 years to bring deep insights and transformative power of Ayurveda to the West. His passion for healing has garnered him respect throughout the world and he is considered a premier authority on Ayurveda outside of India and all across the globe. His numerous books, which are translated in several languages, in fact, over 20 languages and have sold over 700,000 copies just in the US alone, are often the primary textbooks for various Ayurvedic schools and institutions around the world. His talks and writings offer the essence of decades of teaching and clinical practice, providing both inspiring theory and rigorous practical application. He weaves his personal spiritual insights into all his work, and we are very, very grateful to welcome today Dr. Vasant Lad, who is also the founder of the Ayurvedic Institute in the US, the visionary behind Ayur Prana. Namaste, Dr. Lad. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Lad. We are delighted and very honored to have you with us today. I wanted to You're ask welcome. a few. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a few questions, uh, you know, about your journey uh, in the world of Ayurveda, which of course has been very, very long. So Ayurveda was unknown in the US when you first moved from India. And since the 1970s and 80s, you have now been spreading Ayurveda in the US and several other countries. Could you tell us what really inspired you to take up Ayurveda as your life's mission? Thank you. It is inspiration coming from my Guru Maharaj, both Bhimalananda Ji and Hambir Baba. And they inspired me. And my Guru told me that I will go to US, England, Germany, European country, and explain them a practical, simple way of putting Ayurveda into our daily life. And exactly what Guru Maharaj said, it become true. And I'm here in the United States since last, last uh, more than 30 years and traveling every weekend. I'm somewhere either East Coast, West Coast, or even my journey to India. I visit with uh, Germany as well as England. And we develop a nice study group so that medical doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, naturopathists, all these healers, they try to understand Ayurvedic basic principle and they try to put the basic principles of Ayurveda into their practice. So this is a very simple approach and that become true because it is the mission of my teacher, my mentor. Fantastic, uh, Dr. Lad. Uh, you know, like you said, you grew up, you know, in Pune. You had a fascinating childhood where your guru had told you that you would travel to America and spread Ayurveda to the West. Uh, what advice would you give to the youth of today, you know, who are seeking answers and looking for a guru? You know, without guru, we cannot learn anything. Even if we go to the school, high school, we need a teacher, the guru, the mentor, the master to learn math, science, technology, as well as medicine. So in worldly art, like dance, Kathak Dansam, uh, uh, Bharatanatyam, we need a guru, the teacher. Even to learn musical instrument, we need a teacher. Similarly, the human life has a great purpose. And the purpose of human life is self-realization. And self-realization is God-realization. So we need a teacher 
who can guide us how to go in through the breath through the awareness from the outer world into the inner world of being which is full of clarity compassion love but in that journey there are so many obstacles the hurt the childhood abuses then pride prestige position all these things are there so we need a teacher the guru one thing is very important there are so many gurus very beautiful teacher they teach they definitely take the student to some level of understanding but there is a guru there is a sat guru then there is parat par guru parmesh guru these are the different stages of guru so up to sat guru who can guide and give the mantra and help the student to awake within but parat par guru parmesh guru will definitely teach the student to see guru within you that sanskrit word guru is derived from two roots gu means darkness and ru means light so guru is an enlightened master who dispels the darkness and gives us light of inner wisdom inner clarity inner love and compassion for that reason we all need a guru <laughs> thank you dr lad that was very beautifully explained um Dr. Lard, one of the things that we've seen in the West in particular over the last few years is that yoga has become a household uh, word. You know, everyone is practicing yoga today in some form or the other. Some are doing a more authentic practice. Some are doing a different version of yoga today. Uh, and of course, now Ayurveda is also growing popular, you know, in America and other countries around the world. Can you share with our listeners that what exactly is the relationship between these two sciences wonderful ayurveda is a ancient vedic art of healing the body mind and consciousness and it has its root in rigveda and atharva veda and if you look at the yoga yoga is a science of realization practical application of yoga asana ashtanga yoga like yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyana and samadhi so both this system they have the same foundation the four pillars of life dharma artha kam and moksha dharma is righteous duty artha the monetary success kam the fulfillment of positive desire and moksha is enlightenment these are the same dharma artha kam moksha nam arogyam mulam uttamam good health perfect health is the foundation of achieving these four pillars of life so if we look at the the basis upon which ayurveda is based and the basis upon which the yoga is based it is the same foundation in yoga they talk about vata pitta kapha the yogic language they talk about seven dhatu rasa rakta mamsa medha asti majja shukra and artava even yoga talks about prana and also ojas tejas pran so amazing the language of ayurved and language of yoga are concurrent and inherent so you will see that in ancient time most of the ayurvedic clinician they were great yogi and if you look at the yoga even rama's guru vashishtha he was a great yogi and he was a highly enlightened master and he created his unique way saptanam yoga bhumi nam abhyasa kriyate katham kidrishani sa chinnani bhumi kam prati yogina means he developed seven steps of the yoga but then when patanjali came he made ashtanga yoga so whether it is valmiki or vashishtha or narada and the founder of gayatri mantra vishwamitra they were great enlightened yogis and they were great ayurvedic clinician ayurvedic physician they knew how to heal the person so i think yoga and ayurved they go together thanks to swami vivekananda over 100 years ago he first visited america there was a world religious organization and he inspired the people by his charismatic personality by his 
sincere devotion to Ramakrishna Paramahams and he brought yoga 100 years ago to the Western world. Ayurved came since last three decades and slowly it is growing, it is spreading. That's why many, many great people, they have great vision and the vision my guru has that this is the time to bring Ayurved to the West. Same thing happened with Ramakrishna Paramahams. He told Vivekananda, you should go and talk about Vedic knowledge. So Ayurveda is a Ved. And Yoga is also Ved. And there are so many different Yoga. Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Prema Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Hatha Yoga. So many branches of Yoga are there. And we have created in Ayurvedic Institute as well as Ayur Prana is Ayur Yoga. So we try to do the Prakriti assessment of the individual and we try to explain to the individual a particular set of asana, pranayama, mudra and typical method of meditation so that that path will be easy. Because if the person doesn't know the foundation of Ayurveda and if he does yoga, there are possibility of committing mistake and instead of um, becoming yogi, person will become rogi. Rogi means disease person. So yogi, bhogi, rogi, these three things are to be understood and Ayurveda is very spiritual, very dynamic. Ayurveda suggests certain asana, every asana has a therapeutic value. Every pranayama has a great therapeutic value. So yogasana, yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahar, dharana, dhyan, and samadhi. Samadhi is total absorption into the ultimate reality. So I think when we achieve that, we will definitely get physical health, mental health, pranic health, and spiritual health. Beautiful, Dr. Lad. So do you think, Dr. Lad, then Ayurveda, you know, which a lot of people consider as a form of traditional medicine, has in it the potential to become a people's movement, the way yoga has become a people's movement today? Absolutely, you are wonderfully sharing this. So <clears throat> Ayurveda is so open. Even Charag, the founder of Ayurveda, his statement is ekam shastram vidhyano na vidyat shastra nishaya tasmat bahusrutaha syat chikitsakaha. Chikitsak means physician. Physician should learn all other parallel medical system. Ekam shastram vidhyano. By knowing one shastra, one method, one technique, you cannot heal the person completely. And that is why I am sharing with you here Ayurveda and modern medicine, they can go concurrently and inherently. Slowly, slowly, the practicability of Ayurveda, that Ayurveda gives us a proper diet, lifestyle, and cleansing program, detox program, panchakarma, rejuvenation, marma therapy. And that's the beauty of Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is well appreciated by layman. They think, my God, just by changing my diet, my eczema is much controlled. By changing my diet and lifestyle, my asthma is much under control. Even my clients say, I'm no more using the nebulizer, that uh, inhaler. So that's the great achievement that people are receiving through the, by putting Ayurveda into their daily life, into their daily practice. Fantastic. Dr. Lad, anybody who's, you know, known you over a period of time knows that uh, you've had this dream of integrating Ayurveda with modern medicine for an integrative model of healthcare. Can you share with us why you think this is an ideal model for the coming decade? You know, any medical system has a limitation and that is the beauty of it. Modern medicine is wonderful to deal with the acute heart attack, acute stroke paralysis, fracture, acute appendicitis. There is nothing like modern medicine. But once that emergency is over, then what is next? How can we prevent future problems? And there comes Ayurveda. 
Ayurveda is a great preventative medicine. Prevention is better than cure. And then there's the old saying, how to prevent asthma, how to prevent flu, how to prevent becoming sick. Just That's why if we follow proper diet, lifestyle, cleansing program, panchakarma program, rejuvenation program, then we can strengthen our lungs, our heart, our liver, spleen, kidney, the brain, the nervous system. Because in Ayurveda, there is a rejuvenation for each organ. There is a brain tonic, there is a cardiac tonic, there is a liver tonic, there is a tonic for the arthritis, rheumatism, sciatica. So, integration means to bring two systems together so that we should understand the philosophy of Ayurveda, the basic principles of Ayurveda, and we should understand the basic principles of modern medicine. But unfortunately, modern medicine has anti-approach. That's why they have anti-therapy, antibiotic, anti-spasmodic, anti-pyretic, anti-cholinergic, and anti-depression. So it is an anti-approach. Ayurveda says, sometimes you have to go by anti-method, but there are many other things we have to understand. Ayurveda is ancient system of medicine which treats the whole person. In modern medicine, this concept is missing. There is no concept of prakriti. There is no concept of your uniqueness. And they realize that every person is different. A anti-depression uh, drug or a particular anti um, hypertensive drug is not good for everyone. They realize. That's why they are doing permutation and combination with chemical things. And nowadays they are moving so fast that they are creating synthetic drug. Exactly the synthetic drug. So, according to them, your body is a chemical factory. And any chemicals are missing, that's why you are becoming sick. So they give chemical. But every, I do not know the name of the chemicals which doesn't have side effect. Penicillin has side effect, tetracycline has side effect, even aspirin has a side effect. So because of side effect, you will see nowadays, there are more drug-induced disease than the disease created by bacteria and parasite. And then they find some another drug to take care of that drug-induced disease. And that drug has another chain of reaction. So it is unending process. So this is the time that Ayurveda came to United States, to the Western world at a proper time. Because people have seen, people have gone through the suffering of the drug-induced disorder. Now they are thinking that I must have natural way. Therefore, people become conscious. They are taking organic food. Organic is Ayurveda. Organic food, organic herbs, organic means no chemical pesticide, no chemical fertilizer. And people are going to the natural way. Nature is Ayurveda. So naturopath, Ayurveda, as well as homeopath, all these are taking the substances from the nature and they use it based upon Rasa, Veera, Vipak and Prabha. So you will see this is my dream to bring Ayurveda close to the modern medicine. And I am teaching the same way. When I teach a disease, I talk about Western pathology, then I talk about Vedic pathology, Ayurvedic pathology, symptomatology, then therapeutics. An amazing student becomes so enlightened. They get both knowledge concurrently and inherently. Thank you, Dr. Lath. That is such a beautiful insight and there's so much to learn from what you just said that, you know, every science, every subject has its own limitations. And then, Correct. you know, the one size does not fit all. So how do you bring the best of different worlds to create a model which really is for the benefit of humanity? So Absolutely, yeah. Because our life is the integration between body, mind and consciousness. Life is not isolated. Life is not separated. Life is integration. Even your relationship with your husband is integration. 
Fifty percent, his good qualities are there. You, you can match. Fifty percent, you have to adjust. So our life is an integration. Integration means amalgamation. Integration means sharing together, caring together, exploring together, and healing together. Both the body, the mind, and consciousness. And that's why Ayurveda and modern medicine, Ayurveda and Chinese acupuncture, Ayurveda and naturopathy. This is the age of integrated medicine, and slowly there will be colleges and university. They will be teaching integrative medicine or integrated medicine, and it is happening. Absolutely, uh, another aspect of Ayurveda, Doctor Lard, that you know you talk about. You've said previously that Ayurveda is a way of living in harmony with nature. Could you explain to our listeners and our viewers how Ayurveda can enable them to live a life which is aligned with the principles of sustainability? Beautiful, beautiful question. Ayurveda talks a great deal about how to live in harmony with the nature. There are two nature: outer nature, nisarga, huh? the environment, and inner nature is my prakriti my constitution so my inner ecology is governed by vata pitta kapha and outer ecology is governed by season so there are four season summer season the season of pitta dosha then i have to adopt my diet my lifestyle so that i can control pitta not to eat hot cayenne pepper curry pepper chili pepper and sour fruit citrus food and not to work very long time in the hot sun without hat so this is where this way i am protecting my pitta in a summer season autumn seasons are gusty windy the leaves drop color change they become yellow brown and they drop down on the ground and then the new the trees become completely nude and naked and if you look at the naked tree it is hugging the sky amazing that is a gusty windy vata disorder so in vata disorder how can i protect myself so wear two layers of the clothes Don't eat black bean, pinto bean, aduki bean. Don't eat raw vegetable, raw salad. That will be too astringent, too cold. And don't eat frozen food. That way, I can adopt my body, my diet, my lifestyle, so that I can live in harmony with the autumn. Same thing with the winter, which is coming soon. Then I can put sweater, put warm clothes, and early morning drink some ginger, cinnamon, cardamom tea. That ginger, cinnamon, cardamom tea. is very effective that will calm down kapha dosha and spring season is a season of pollen people get allergy that's the best season to do nasya and do pancha karma and vaman so this is i mean to live in harmony with the nature thank you dr lad that uh, again is such an important lesson for people that you know we we are kind of learning so many new skills uh, every day but our very inherent nature you know how we should live day to day which the nature around us is teaching us uh, is something i which is a forgotten uh, uh, you know science mm-hmm. so thank you for uh, illuminating our listeners with that information uh, dr lad you know this podcast is being recorded in 2020 and you know uh, it, covid 19 has been really in the backdrop of everything this year so what according to you is the relevance of ayurveda today in the backdrop of a global pandemic like covid 19 and the increasing digitalization of the world beautiful wonderful question you know in charak samhita there is a separate chapter on janapada dhvamsa vyadhi jana pada dhvang means pandemic they are talking about pandemic and in pandemic they say not to be there is a best block in martial art not to be there so don't be in the crowd if you are in the crowd you will definitely pick up the um, virus and you can get infected because nasal mucous membrane oral mucous membrane eyes conjunctiva the virus can go through the eyes through the nose through the mouth so very important that wash your hand and keep a safe distancing social distancing but what is important in ayurved ayurved say hey you have to protect your agni agni reva balam pumsam agnihi ayuhu agni 
is your gastric fire, digestive fire, your immune system, and to maintain your immunity, because this virus affects the respiratory tract, people get common cold, congestion, cough, and fever. Oh, that's not good. So you can take Sitopaladi, Talisadi, Abrak, Basma, Mahasudarshan, and take ginger tea, cinnamon tea, cardamom tea, or even CCF tea with a lime and little ginger, cumin, coriander, phenol. This is our short form CCF, cumin, coriander, phenol with little lime and pinch of ginger. Amazing, that tea will booster the immunity. So even during pandemic, though there is no vaccination available, we can booster our immunity so that we can be able to handle and protect ourselves and protect our family and protect our neighborhood during this pandemic condition or time. Ayurved talks a great deal about doing nastya, then doing marmat chikitsa and taking herbal protocol. So that way, Ayurved has its unique way of protecting your immune system and protecting your family through proper diet, lifestyle. And again, we have to surrender to this pandemic and take good care of our family. Thank you for that advice, Dr. Lard. Uh, the pandemic, of course, has gotten the world to adapt to new ways of uh, doing things, you know, new ways of working. There's a work from home culture. There is new ways of education now. Uh, so we know that you have started this wonderful initiative called Ayur Prana, which is to take your teachings now to a global audience, but through a digital medium. Can you share a little more about this experience, you know, that you've had over the last couple of months uh, creating Ayur Prana? And what does this really mean for the future of Ayurvedic education? You know, since last 30 years, Ayurvedic Institute did wonderful thing. They have deep root and they try to explore Ayurveda to the East Coast, West Coast, to the England, Germany. But now this very energetic, good Oja stage of prana people, young youngster, they come together. They have rich prana, rich Ojas, rich Tejas. So as an outcome of those students who studied Ayurveda, they come together. The like attracts like. And they thought that Ayur Prana, we can explore Ayurved, we can broadcast Ayurved. Because of this pandemic, we cannot have conversation, we cannot um, come close together and talk. So they have wonderful crew, the, the camera, the TV, the computer, and they have wonderful modern technology. So that you will surprise since last couple of months, we are already teaching how to read Pulse on Zooming to the students from England, Germany, Russia, as well as Japan. This is amazing. And uh, I was surprised that thanks to the Guru Nadi, Guru Nadi is one of the Nadi that helps what you reading and what I'm reading, is it correct or not? So I can double check it, that is a barometer clinical barometer is Guru Nadi. So to make a long story short, Ayur Prana is a great Ayurvedic institute and Ayurvedic, uh, Ayur Prana, they work together, they share together and they explore together this ancient Vedic wisdom on a broad scale so that even just by sitting in our uh, office, we can be in tune and through the zooming, we can communicate to the whole world, either the Japan or Russia or England or America, all that. So Ayur Prana, there is no Ayu who means life without Prana. And Prana is body's neuroelectrical energy field. And that neuroelectrical energy field is consciousness. So Ayur Prana is bringing this wisdom to every individual consciousness so that they will learn together, share together, explore together. Sangachadvam, samvadadvam, 
Sammo vacham si janatam Deva bhagam yatha purve Sanjana na upasate Let us walk together, share together and explore together the ancient Vedic wisdom through Ayur Prana. Well, Dr. Lard, you know, they say every cloud has a silver lining. And I think in this year of uncertainty, uh, it truly is a gift to all your students that even though they cannot travel and meet you, whether it is in India or the US, uh, they are able to still continue to learn from you uh, through such a wonderful medium, which is Ayur Prana. Uh, so Dr. Lard, how do you think Ayur Prana is playing an important role in transmitting Ayurveda to the future generations? You know, Ayur Prana is doing wonderful coordination, cooperation, synchronization of Vedic wisdom to boil it down to the individual so that any layman, any simple person can pick up the basic principles of Ayurveda and Ayur Prana as well as Ayur Yoga and Ayur Yoga, Ayur Prana and Ayurvedic Institute, they will work together. This is a tripod of life, Sattvam, Atma, Shari, Rancha. So Ayur Prana, Ayur Yoga and Ayurveda, they will flower together and it will definitely continue this wonderful sharing. Soon we have 200 people just for pulse reading. This is amazing. And we were afraid by, because of this COVID, we have to close the institute. But at the right time, right action happened. And God sent right angel at the right proper time. So this is my innocent understanding that definitely Ayur Prana will flower into para ojas. Prana become para ojas, superior ojas, which is nothing but auric field of the individual. So Ayur Prana, with the dedication, devotion, commitment, and hard working, there are people, they work very hard. And this, this is not one man's work. This is a teamwork. And this is a wonderful crew. And thank God and thank Mother Nature that this is beautifully flowering, flourishing, and fruiting. <laughs> so, Dr. Lad, what, according to you now, is the future of Ayurveda? You have done some fantastic work for Ayurveda, like you said, over the last 30, 40 years, taking it across the globe. Uh, what, according to you now, is the future of Ayurveda when we look at it from 2020, looking forward to the next decade in 2030 and also of course what are your plans with Ayur Rana uh, you know as a part of this future of Ayurveda you know it is very good to teach Ayurveda to the layman to the simple innocent people because scientists and these people they are little conditioned by their science right if you try to teach Ayurveda to the great scientist he, he, he cannot understand because he is preoccupied with his ideas. So if we do the grassroots work, if we teach Ayurveda to the layman, to the common person, how to eat properly, how to do yoga, how to do asana, pranayama, proper diet, lifestyle, domestic panchakarma, and that will definitely will spread Ayurveda at large so that then scientists will think that, my God, I put this patient on interferon and even the viral load was not coming down. And this guy, he's just eating yogurt and um, baking soda and drastically his viral load came down. Then scientists will think there must be something because we love science and we love scientific approach. But unfortunately, science has blinder. They don't look here, there. They just look on their track, which is good. I'm not criticizing with a great love and respect I'm sharing with you that scientific approach is great, but science should be open and scientists should be open to the other possibility. And that's why when we are teaching the Ayurveda to the young people and they learn, then they will grow. And then they will realize, and then it will become the mainstream. It will take time. 
to bring Ayurveda to the mainstream. But one day it will happen. So future of Ayurveda with the divine help of Ayur Prana, it will be fantastic. It will glow. It will flower and it will come pretty close to the mainstream. But you know, my guru told me just work. And when you work with devotion, with dedication, people will follow you. Amazing. Krishna has not written Bhagavad Gita for future generation. It was a simple advice to Arjuna. And what happened? It became a wonderful work for the future. Same thing Bible. Same thing Quran. So all these great dedicated devoted people, when they create some beautiful work, it will be appreciated by the whole population. So, I think future of Ayurveda will be very bright. Wonderful. On that note, uh, Dr. Lard, we truly hope that the future of Ayurveda is very bright and your legacy continues to live, uh, you know, decade after decade. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Dr. Lard.